guys and welcome to another weekend show. So two weeks ago I tested the PRGR indoors against the 10,000 pound GC3 launch monitor and the results were fantastic. But today I'm gonna head outside onto the golf course and put it through its paces on the golf course to see if those results and accuracy play out on the actual golf course, put it into different situations in terms of the long game, short game, how accurate is it again when we're out on that golf course but also today if you're in the uk it's mother's day and mother in sunday so we can't go through this weekend show without dedicating this to all the amazing mums out there so for me personally obviously there couldn't be a golf mad dad without my wife mrs golf mad dad for those of you that know her she is the most caring kindest person and hardest working I know, so I'm very lucky to have her as my wife and the mum to our little boy. So together we bring up a special little boy. We run a PR business together. And even though she's dealt with lots of big celebrities in the past, she's a little bit camera shy. So that's why we still call her Mrs. Golf, my dad. But big shout out, big love. So thank you, Mrs. Golf, my dad, and happy Mother's Day. Also sending much love to my mum. Again, one of the most caring people you could ever possibly meet. My little boy absolutely devotes himself to her. So happy Mother's Day, Mum. You're a very special person and we love you lots. And to my mother-in-law, again, another special, very caring person. So I'm lucky to have such caring people in my life. So let's make sure all these mums in our life have a fantastic day today. So all the mums watching down this lens, hope you have a very special day today. And for the guys down there, let's make sure we go and treat our mums extra special for today. So I'm heading, as I said, to Sherland Golf Course. Actually, I've not been up here for the past couple of months in terms of golf. Like a lot of courses in Derbyshire, we've all had it tough here. Clay-based courses, it's been so wet. So I'm excited to get back out on the course here, catch up with a few people. It threatened to get a bit warmer this week, but it's absolutely Baltic today. So coffee is in hand. So let's get to the course and put the PRGR through its paces. Happy Mother's Day all. So as I said, I want to put the PRGR through its paces out on the course, have a play with things. We can look at clubber speed, ball speed, carry distance. How much can we use this out on the golf course as it is so portable and quick to set up? So quick disclaimer, when I put it against the GC3, with the GC3, you can set things like temperature, altitude. So the GC3, when I tested it, it was 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously with the cheaper PRG, I don't know what the algorithm is set in terms of what it uses for temperature. So carry distance, we'll see how that goes because it is about eight degrees, about 46 degrees Fahrenheit. If any of you know what's that set at, let me know in the comments below and um, we'll give it a go. So we'll test it out. We've got some driver, short game. So we'll check some numbers and see how much we can use this out on the course as well as obviously it's a fantastic aid for our speed training, over speed training at the driving range. Right, so first up, driver, big dog, comes straight out of the car, not warmed up. So let's see how much speed I'm losing by not warming up. So set this up five feet behind. Indoors, when it's nice and warm, I've just got a t-shirt on. I cruise at about 120 to 125 mile an hour clubber speed. So as I said, it's cold, got about three layers on, not warmed up. So when we walk in to that first tee, not warmed up, how much speed are we giving away? So let's hit a couple on here. The wind's into, but I'm more interested in the club head speed and the ball speed and see what the strike's like, but definitely the club head speed. Let's try and smooth one down here. See if it picks up the data. All right, so first up, definitely cold swing of the day. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll take a photo of it anyway. So club head speed, 109, ball speed, 170. Smash factor, that's not right, but anyway. 
But ball speed 170 was a little heel strike, just gone down the left. Total distance 311. I've definitely not gone that today on that club head speed. That's because the smash factor's way out. But as we saw, but as we saw from the data, the ball speed was always spot on. Club head speed definitely felt a little slower, so 109, definitely about right. Right, let's hit one more. Oh, right, let's hit one more. Try and give it a bit more beans. I don't want to be losing 10, 12 mile an hour by not warming up and the body being cold. Also, a little disclaimer. I did just get to Sherland, forgot my memory card. So I've had to go all the way back, all the way back here again. So I've had about an hour and a half in the car. So I'm definitely a little bit stiff as well. Another excuse, but another reason I really need to warm up first, but. It's a better strike. Ooh. Got the speed back up there. Right, I'll show you the screen grab of that one, but 124 club head speed, ball speed 172. Total distance 316. It's not gone there, we're into the wind. It's cold, so the algorithm is definitely set to a warmer temperature, but 124 club head speed jumped up from 109. Bad first one. Right guys, so as you can see from the tee, fun, useful piece of equipment. If you want to check the club head speed for that day, the ball speed, if I'm just playing on my own, if you're playing on your own, you can pop it down. It takes two seconds to set up. As I said in other videos, we don't have to sync it to a phone, so no setting up issues. Just literally put it down five feet behind. As you can see, I just put it up on the box just to raise it and I seem to get more consistent readings. So let's have a look at pitching. Obviously, we can't look at spin numbers and launch angles on this, but we can look at carry distances and ball speed. So here I've got 75 yards. I'm into the wind on here. So I'm using Matt's winter conditions here. So let's have a look if it picks up the carry distance ball speeds. I've got my 58. Let's try and clip a few. So the pin is 75, but it's cold plane into the wind so let's see what the carry distance is on the PRGR. <laughs> oh just past pin high. Oh and it's not picked it up. Right, first test fail on the wedges so far. Three, four, five. Let's move it a smidge closer. Let's check we got that set up properly. Not hit from one of these mats for a while and you forget how spinny they are as well. Let's give this one a go, see if we can get a read him. Let's read it. So I think first one, I was just a tad too far. I think it stays between four and six feet. That's probably four and a half feet away. Let's have a look at the numbers right we'll go and have a look up there with the carry distance but a quick overview it's got a total of 87 yards which i've hit that about 90 percent which is about my 90 yard swing with my 58 so pretty good reading so far and also as i was setting up just remember to flick over to the club what we're using so i picked sand wedge on there and that i think helps with the algorithm when it's working out carry distance but pitching distance, pretty accurate, I'd say. Right, guys, so we're up at Greenside. Actually, as I started walking up, the wind is actually not where I thought it was. I've actually looked at my weather app as well. So it's actually off the right, ever so slightly helping. So actually in distance terms, so in fact, in distance, I don't actually have to take any yardages off as the wind is ever so slightly helping and off the right. So the pin was 75, so six, seven, So it's actually pitch, there's a pitch mark, it's pitched 83 yards. The PRGR said 87, so with it being cold and it's slightly helping a bit, that's not far off on that. So in terms of carry distance, I'd say a pretty good start, which was backed up by the indoor data showing ball speeds, carry distance, pretty spot on. So a great start in terms of performance from the PRGR for the first pitch of the day. So in terms of pitching, I think what it shows is that I could build 
with good confidence if I've not got access to a high-end launch monitor by using the lower-end PRGR, I could actually build a wedge distance control system by using the PRGR, whether it's on the practice ground or a bit of field you can go to. Well, let's also see how accurate it is when it comes in terms of chipping. Again, obviously we can't see the spin launch angles. So when I'm doing my short game, I'd like to see the spin numbers, which we'll use the GC3 to do later on. But in terms of carry distance, how accurate can it be with just little chips? The pin, which is close to you guys, is 22 yards. So I'm looking to carry this around 20 yards. Let's just see if it will just pick up this carry distance. Pitched at exactly 22 yards. Wow. Let me take a photo of this for you guys. Come and show you. I need a little run to get warm. So it's pitched exactly pin high, so that was 22 yards as from here, but you'll see the pop-up as well. It's actually read total distance, 23 yards. Ball speed, club head speed, don't really need to know that on here. I would be looking at spin with the GC3, but for a little chip, 23 yards, it's pitched 22 and a bit yards. That is super, super easy impressive but what's also super exciting with that is obviously it's so easy to set up i feel i could build a pitching distance now by using the prgr out on the course on the practice ground but also in terms of around the green for my carry distance so if you want to carry it 10 15 20 yards from first testing it looks like i can also use the prgr to really dial in that short game as well wow on to the next one Right guys, next experiment, can we use the PRGR to see if our math skills or golf course IQ in terms of distance with the conditions is working? So here I've got par three, it's 123 yards to the pin. It's downwind. So for those who don't know how I work out the wind is when it's downwind, I take off half percent for every mile an hour. When it's downwind, when it's into the wind, I add on. 1% for every mile an hour of wind. So here I've got 123 yard pin. It's 16 miles an hour, it's gusting at 20, but I'm gonna take it at 16 miles an hour wind. So, so half that, 8%, 123, roughly around 113, 114 shot. So obviously the PRGR is not gonna equate the wind. So if I play roughly around my 113 yard shot, I'm trying to get this to read 113, as long as I get a good strike, let's see where it's landed and see if I've worked out the wind conditions accurately. So this could be a super cool tool to work out if you're working out conditions out on the course correctly and adding or taking off enough distance when it terms of cold, wind, all things like that. So let's try and hit 113 shot. Again, we're on these mats, so it does add a little bit more spin. Let's try and hit my 113-ish shot. I've heard a beep, Let's see what it's read, if anything. Right, so we've got the data. I'll go and talk about it, where that ball's finished up. Right guys, so we're up at Greenside. Gotta say, I've not really thought about using the PRGR to check how my distance control is in different conditions, but so in terms of the PRGR, I tried to work out, or I tried to hit my 113 yardage shot on the PRGR it said it was going 110 yards. So it's actually pitched here and stopped here. So if I'd have hit the 113 carry, which I would have hit, it would have been one, two, three. So if I hit my 113, I would have only been one, two, two and a half, three yards short of the actual pin. So what's good with that is actually the working out and the maths with the wind was not actually too far out. If I'd have added three more yards on, I would not be far off my target. So the PRGR has actually an additional benefit is that we can check whether our on-course working out golfing IQ is as good as we want it to be. And if not, we can use it to get better. I just love this thing. All right guys, thought I'd give it a little test in the bunker. Could it be used to work on distance control for the longer bunker shots, 30 yards, 20 yards, 40 yards? I've hit a couple, it's not picking it up, so it's only measuring club head speed. 
Obviously, if we're doing this on his own, we can just put markers out, but I just wanted to give it a go. Let's just try a couple more. Oh, actually, he's read that one. I've hit a couple before. That could be very interesting. So on here, we have got carry 17 yards. Let's try. Seventeen yards. Oh wow. This machine for 180 pounds just gets better and better. Right. Let's give that one another go. Again, we're in winter conditions still here, so we're using compact sand. It's a left hip release, but that was cool. Right. The reason why I wanted to test with this is so. I roughly know if I'm hitting the same distance behind the ball in terms of 20, 30, 40 yards, I can just control distance with imagining how far I throw that sand. Wow. Two out of two. And that was my longer bunker shot. Don't know if you see me on camera here, right? 36 yards, that one. I'll be back in a moment. Wow, it's a muddy ball, but 35 yards. Let's get back. 35 yards, 36 yards. That is super, super impressive. So for our practicing in a practice bunker, if you've got a practice bunker at your facility, now we could be hitting plenty of balls in here, controlling that distance. Again, obviously we can't see the spin, but in terms of distance control, I've got my 54 degree. I could try and dial in my 20, 30, 40 yards. Wow. I did not expect that from the bunker. I just love this thing. Okay guys, so next on course usage for the PRGR, we can check distance control with shot shape as well. I know from hitting on the indoor studio, my nine iron, it's roughly around one, six, eight on the carry. If I hit a little cut, it takes about five, six yards off. If I hit the draw, goes up to our run 72. Nick Faldo's a big one for this. He uses that to take and add on his distances. For him to hit the fade, I saw something the other day. His feeling is that his form is pointing to two o'clock to hit the fade. And as the way through, his form is pointing to 10 o'clock to hit the draw. So let's hit a couple of nines. We've got the par three. So I'm just looking at carry distance here out on the course to see if we can control carry distance on terms of that, then it's up to me to control strike, conditions, everything else. So first up, I'm going to try hit a little cut. A little push cut. Again, straight up there. So as you'll see from the pop-up photo here, straight away, carry 159. And it wasn't the best of strikes, but as I said, my stock goes around one, six, eight when I'm on the indoor studio. So we cold, little cut. I'd expect that to go around 60, 160. Let's hit 159. So now if I hit a little draw, obviously with the wind off the right, it's gonna go even further, but I'm looking here. Let's see if this goes up to around. 170 without trying to whack it. <sighs> Big high draw. Oh, I think that's pin high as well. So again, just super impressive. So I'm in the indoor studio, stock 99, around 168. I had a little draw in there and that was just a nice high five yard draw. Carry distance, 174. I am adding five, six yards with the draw, taking off five, six yards with the fade. It's just super impressive tool, guys. So it shows you can distance control by also adding fades and draws, and we can check this out on the course. So simple to set up. Just an amazing tool, guys. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the on-course review so far. If you do, if you want to hit that like and subscribe, it'd be a big help to the channel. Would really appreciate it. 
So we can see, we can use this to check driver speed, pitching distance, we can build a wedge matrix system, we can use it for chipping, even out of bunkers, shot shaping, control, distance control, check carry distance. But obviously the most fun and what the PRGR is designed really for is to go check that speed and chase that speed. So when we've got open fairways, we can peg a couple up, see how fast we can actually swing this club. See if that gym work, all that speed training has been paying off, but hopefully when it warms up, we're down to t-shirts, whole lot easier. So let's give it a smash. Oh, it's down the middle. Oh, my right, guys, cold, stiff, still 125 mile an hour. Club at speed, just a whole lot of fun. Right guys, hope you enjoyed that episode of the weekend show. As you can see, I absolutely love the PRGR. Also out on the course, it's shown from today that it's so useful and it could help golfers of all age, all ability. So we know it's Mother's Day. I'm sure there's a few golf mad mums out there. So it might not be too late to go hit that button and go buy it. If I had an affiliate link, I would definitely leave it in the description below. But whatever your age, ability, I definitely recommend getting the PRGR if you can. It'll just be a great training aid and help improve your golf immensely. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy Mother's Day. Go treat those mums. Very precious people. So till next time, guys. Laters.